Hey One Church, welcome to another night of our online service. We are so glad that you could join us this week. Tonight we have Pastor Rick Stone bringing us the word and it's gonna be another one of those life-changing messages that you do not wanna miss. And because you don't wanna miss it, you don't want your friends to miss it either. So it's not too late. Go ahead and tag someone in the comments, share this to your wall, invite a friend. You don't want someone to miss out because this is gonna be incredible. Trust me, it's another fantastic grace message that is gonna rock your world. So we are so thankful to have Pastor Rick Stone preaching the word tonight. And we wanna hear how your week's been. Has it been incredible? Has something amazing happened? Have you have a praise report or a prayer request? We wanna hear, we miss you, we love you, and we want to hear from you. So go ahead, leave something in the comments or send us a direct message or even email us at info at onechurchvv.com. There's still ways to get involved. We still wanna hear from you and you can message us in any way and we wanna hear from you. So without further ado, here is Pastor Rick Stone with tonight's message. Here at One Church, we believe your tithes should belong in your home church. If you feel led to give, tithes and offerings can be contributed online through the Venmo app, available both on Apple and Google. Just search for One Church VB to find us today. You are now about to experience a Rick Stone original. Please enjoy. Hey, One Church, it is Saturday night and we are excited that you're joining us this evening. If you want to drop a comment below, tell us where you're watching from in your car, Virginia Beach, you, be as specific or not specific as you would like. But wherever you are, we're glad that you're joining us, whether you're watching this during the premiere or watching this later on. Thank you for joining us, and we are excited to have you. Today, I'm going to be reading in, out of Romans. I, I, I love Romans. It's Paul's letter to the Rome church. And the cool thing is, is even though it's written to the church in Rome, that we can read it and use it for ourselves today. That it's, it's just as valuable as it was written to them as it is to us today. And the, the cool thing is, is that you just see God's grace, love, mercy, and free just shine through all of what Paul's writing. Because where Paul came from, you can fully understand uh, why Paul would understand God's grace. He fully understood the Old Testament and he understood what well, the Old Covenant and where Jesus took him from. And we get to enjoy that today on this side of the cross. So I'm going to be reading in Romans 8, and it's going to be 15 through 17. And I hope by the end of this, you feel freedom and you feel elevated and excited about what God or who God is and what he says about you and who you are. And I think this will truly uh, get you excited about what God says you are. So many times we say, we think things about who we are, but we need to go to the Word and understand what God says about us. So it's going to be Romans 8, and it's going to be 15 through 17. We're going to start uh, in verse 15, and here we go. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. See, right off the back, he, he's talking about chains dropping and, and that it's not the spirit that brings chains, but drops the chains of sin and, and, and the old you that, that held you back. See, God created us to be in relationship with him. And if we're created to, to be a certain way and that's in relationship with him, we feel the freedom when we walk in who we are as a son or a daughter of the Most High, of, of the King. We are now sonship with him. And that's what we get to cry, Abba Father. That, that Abba Father is a closeness. It's not a God over there and man over here. It's now we're close. I can go to him like 
uh, when my kids call me daddy and, and come close to me, it, it's not fearful anymore. It's, we have that close connection. I, I sometimes get caught up watching YouTube videos when I lay down at night. You know, you just watch one and then next thing you know, an hour goes by and you've watched a ton. You start off with like a skateboard trick or, well, that's a cool video. And next thing you know, you watch something political and then you go to a reunion and then you're like, why am I watching these things on how to bake a cake? I don't even know how to bake. Like you go through all this stuff and that's what I was doing the other day. And I remember watching these uh, adoption videos where they, it may, they may have had a foster kid that was living with them for a while and they record these videos of them telling the child that they're adopting them and that they're now a part of the family. And here I am in the middle of the night trying not to hold back tears because it's so beautiful, this little five-year-old getting so excited that he now has a family. And that's what God does for us, that we now are a part of a family. Once we say yes, we're a part of that family. It doesn't, it, our futures are solidified. This, this little kid that you're watching in the video has, was unknown. He's just a foster child and, and he doesn't know what his future is going to be like. But once we say yes, our future is solidified. Just like that little boy, he doesn't have to worry about where he's going next or, or what's going to happen. He has a family now and that's what God is telling us right here. That the spirit comes inside of us and the, the fear of the unknown is gone because God holds our future. That, that our family is together now. One of my favorite verses on fear is in 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And that's what God's perfect love does, that we don't have to live in fear and bondage anymore because God is in control. Because we know, we know God works all things for the good of those who love Him. So everything is working for our good, even when we don't understand it. Because just like a good father, he's there for you. He wants to, he wants to help you. He wants to guide you. And, and all, all it takes us is to make a decision, yes, because of what Jesus already did on the cross. See, we get to cry, Abba, Father. We get to say, go straight to the throne room. Get to go boldly to the throne because of what Jesus did on the cross. Sometimes as Christians, the enemy likes to, to throw chains on us and we get to live this life like we're in chains, like God might be mad at us and he doesn't want to talk to us because we did something wrong or we may not feel good enough, but the chains are gone. Of course we're going to mess up. If we weren't going to mess up, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross in the first place. But we had to get to walk in this freedom and go to the Father and, and we get to break these chains because of what Jesus did. We don't get to live in fear because where God's love is, fear is not. So when you feel fear, go to God, lift it up. It's going to happen. We've all felt fear. We've all felt those, those situations where we don't know the unknown, but we can rely on God and know that he is going to take care of us. And, and I love how that he calls us sons and daughters, which is so personable. The veil's broken. There's no barrier anymore once we accept his love. In verse 16, it's, this is what, well, how do we know we're saying? How do we really know we are? Like, well, do, I, do I get a letter in the mail saying, here you go? Do I get a rewards card to know that I'm, I'm in the Chick-fil-A red zone? You know what I'm talking about. I'm a red member in the Chick-fil-A. But you do, how, how do I know that I can truly know I'm a son or daughter of the king? In verse 16, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That, that, that's that, that feeling that, that you have when you accept Jesus in your life. When you say, yes, he died on the cross for our sins. It, I, it's almost undescribable, but our spirit just knows it's where we're supposed to be. It's that void that, uh, that void that we don't know. It's that kid that doesn't have a family and now is a part of a family. It's the spirit inside of us that we know that we're saved. And unless you're a Christian, that's how you really don't fully understand it until you make that decision. It's the spirit inside of us that guides us 
in the right direction. It's the Holy Spirit that comforts us when we're going through sad or difficult, tough times, no matter what's going on. That's how we know that we are God's children, because the Spirit's inside of us. That's, that's what seals us. It's Jesus, or God chose us, Jesus died on the cross for us, and the Holy Spirit seals the deal for us that we are now in His family. I'm going to continue in verse 17. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. So not only are we sons and daughters, we are co-heirs with Christ to the kingdom. Now, now we are co... I'm not saying... I'm not saying I'm as good as Jesus, because without Jesus, I'm nothing. It's Jesus is humble enough to die on the cross for our sins and be okay with us being co-heirs. I mean, does that, does that make sense? That he lived a perfect life, brutally murdered on the cross, and now he's okay with us being co-heirs? And not just okay, he did it so we can be co-heirs. He did it so we could break down those barriers. So that we are children, that, that we are now God's children, and we are so much more, I'm going to say that God's over here and we are over there, that we are together as one, that we are co-heirs. Co- that is more than freedom. Free- freedom is just letting you go out on your own and now I don't have anyone to hold me down. We are co-heirs to the kingdom. Christians, we are co-heirs to the kingdom. And we need to understand that when we're walking through difficult times, because I know the enemy tries to knock us down and we forget sometimes who God says we are. I can tell you what the enemy says we are. I can tell you what myself sometimes says we are. But when we read Romans 8 and what God tells us that we are, co-heirs, princes, princesses, whatever you want to say, if that makes you feel good, call call yourself what what you want, but you are co-heirs to the throne because God wants you to be. He wants us to be a part of the family. That's why the church is so beautiful. That's why Paul went around and made a multicultural, multi-ethical. Everybody's allowed to come in to the church because of what Jesus did on the cross. Paul, who was Jewish and and he was normally, hey, no, it's Jews only and and y'all stay over here and we do our thing realize what Jesus has done that has opened up to everyone. Everyone has the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and now be co-heirs. That gives you freedom and it elevates you. And I really hope reading this and going back through Romans 8, you see that for yourself and let, I pray that God reveals that to you, that you are so much more than what you think you are. And it's because of what God's saying that he absolutely loves you. And guess what? There was nothing I did besides say yes. And everything else follows that. Everything else follows. The obedience comes with that. The life change, the fruit of the Holy Spirit happens because it's inside of us. And it feels right because the Spirit is with us. I don't need someone to come up and bash something over my head to try to tell me this is how you need to act. This is what you're doing. How dare you do this? How dare you... You need, it's the spirit is inside of you, guiding you on where you need to go and how you need to act. Because you are now co-heirs to the throne. Oh, and the witnessing, that comes automatically, right? When you get this excited, Paul goes around and starts creating churches. And now he's writing letters to all these churches, just reminding them of who they are. I'm going to follow in the the same theme of me watching random YouTube videos. (laughs) Because actually this one was a Facebook video, it doesn't follow, follow through, but once again, I click on a video, find it interesting, and you know, you scroll through, and all of a sudden Facebook just knows exactly what you want to see. You ne- never thought about it in your life, but here's a video, I'll, I'll watch it. But I'll be honest with you, this one I probably didn't want to see. And this probably was one of the most sad videos I've ever seen. And I'm scrolling through, and it's this lady pulling over on the side of the road and she's just distraught. She's, she's, I, I, basically she feels like she's not in control and she has 
an infant in the back seat in, the, in her car seat and this man's filming her and the lady was just saying, I don't have clothes for my child. I can't take care of my child. I don't know what her past is. I don't know what she was going through, but she's just distraught and she throws diapers out on, on the sidewalk and then she takes the car seat with the infant in it and sets it on the side of the road. And basically saying, I don't have clothes for it. Here's two pairs of clothes. This guy's like, what are, you, what are you doing? And I'll be honest with you, it made me very angry at first. It made me very angry that you would do that to this innocent child. But I have no idea what she's going through. I have no idea what's going on. Do, do I condone that? Of course not. But I felt so bad immediately after that for this child. All, all that happened was born and now pretty much left, at, exactly left on the side of the road with, with a few diapers. And the mom, distraught, gets back in the car and just speeds off and the video ends. And it, it's one of those feelings when you're watching it that you can't believe you saw what you just saw. It's almost like this should be a crazy movie that why is this happening? And I couldn't help to think of my kids. So a little side note, I'm sitting there like, I need to go hug my kids upstairs. Like, I need to go tell them I love them. But it, it was just so incredibly sad to see this kid left on the side of the road. And maybe you feel like you were that kid that's left on the side of the road, that you don't know why you're in this position or why life has brought you this way. And, and you don't know the future and Maybe it wasn't even your fault at all of your own, and, and here you are. I want to say I have good news for you. That Jesus went to the cross, so you are no longer an orphan. You are no longer an orphan, but co-heirs to the throne. You are now a part of a family. The cool thing is, is that, watch it, I'm thinking of my, my, my kids, and how I know they don't have to go through that. And I wanna say for, for you that Jesus died on the cross and you do not have to go through that. That you are loved and adored by our Father in heaven. And he proved it by Jesus going on the cross. And you may say, well, I, don't, I don't understand, how do I know? Well, just a verse ago, it says the Spirit will testify to you. Our, the Holy Spirit will testify with your spirit and you'll fully understand that you are no longer alone. And if you're a Christian already, I'm going to talk to you straight. We need to stop walking around like we're orphans. We are co-heirs to the throne. When we pray to God, we have a direct connection to Him. When when things are not going right, we can lift everything up to Him. Once again, He works all things for the good of those who love Him. I'm gonna give what I have. So I don't know how you feel today. I don't know what you're going through. Hey, maybe life's going good. Hey, this message can make you feel better. But maybe life's not really going as it seems. I mean, it is 2020. <laughs> Nothing seems like it's going right. I read a meme the other day that was like, the hurricane coming is probably the most normal thing to happen this year. But we need to stand on God's word. We need to stand in, on what he says about us. Co-heirs to the throne. No matter where, where you've been, if whether you felt like you've been left on the side of the road or you had a loving family growing up or, or however your life is, you make that decision, and I promise you, not, it's not even my promise, it's the Word's promise that the Spirit will testify, will testify to your Spirit, and you will fully understand that God loves you. We can go around and show God's love working through us, but it's nothing like having that direct connection with who God is. He absolutely loves you. Doesn't matter about your past. Bring it to Him. I promise you, He will reveal Himself to you. You are not an orphan. 
once you make that decision. And if you would like to make a decision for Jesus, I, you can either drop a comment below or you can private message us. We would love to connect with you and show you what it's like to be a part of the family. It doesn't even have to be this church, but the church is what's so beautiful. All backgrounds, no matter where you came from, you are invited to partake and be part of the family. I'm going to pray. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that, that you give us co-heirship, that you give us freedom, that the chains break off, off of us because of what Jesus did on the cross. That you loved us so much that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so the veil, the, the barrier can be broken between us and now we can be co-heirs to the kingdom. We declare this, that we are Christians today in the name of Jesus, amen. One Church, thank you so much for watching tonight. I hope you feel excited. I hope you're elevated. Uh, I might go for a run after this. I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't going to run today. But you have a great night. See you next week.